All right, so we finally got done. This thing should be clean, but check this crap out. All that nasty crap in there yet. So you're like, what the heck? And now it trips randomly and we can't figure out why. So far, I'm not seeing anything popping out at me. What do you do? It sounds to me like this might be the first time. So I'm gonna have to call the owner and find out a little more information about this. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're back to this thing. It's been four months since I've been here. This little nugget of love has a new pressure switch on it, uh, manual reset, and it has a condenser fan motor that had been replaced once or twice. And now it trips randomly and we can't figure out why. So we're gonna go in here and see if we can find out what's running, not running, because now it's supposedly running and wasn't running earlier. All right, the fan is running. Moderately cool. Thermostat. Yeah, it's just sitting there. Okay, we got a little bit of vibration going on here. Last time I put dampeners around everything so it wouldn't shake like that, which that was bent down so it wouldn't do that reset button right there it's not tripped get everything all nice and tidied up so it wouldn't trip and wouldn't vibrate I feel a lot of heat that heat right there is cramming and we got that right there I wonder if we are somehow motors hot not hot enough that it's burning me but it's definitely warm these motors do run pretty warm I mean, it's definitely warm. Okay, now yeah, I changed that January or December 1st last year. So it's been almost all December, all of January, all of February, and almost March. Almost March, almost four months. Now it's tripping again. Now this has a cover that goes over top of it. So that's why this is off. It was to try to get rid of any extra air. But man, I can feel this heat just cramming out here. Now I know I've went through this before, but. most part it is a little dirty but not horrible. Man, we're kind of shooting in the dark here. That's what sucks. Okay, we look like we're getting a little warmer. Let's see if we're in defrost here. Looks like we are. Yep. Fan came on immediately. Normally don't need that many defrosts. That's four of them. But I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and put a little mark right there. Set the clock to more along the lines of what we're at. We'll see if that changes. Let's go up here and see the sight glass, see if it looks okay or not. Looks like it's alright. We're warm. Not crazy hot. So far, I'm not seeing anything popping out at me. What do you do? Do you change the motor? They put an aftermarket motor on there originally and they came back and changed it to an uh, OEM motor and supposedly they've had a problem since then. I don't know if we're just jumping the gun and saying that, you know, it's tripping. It sounds to me like this might be the first time. So I'm gonna have to call the owner and find out a little more information about this. Got a new Phoenix light here, the WH23R. It's kind of similar to what you've seen online. This thing on. Turns on and off. It's got different uh, brightnesses. Flip to the next one. Now you're in a spot. You adjust that different brightnesses. And you get dual. And you can turn that option on and off. Four blue lights there to let you know that the battery's charged. It's got USB-C charging. Non-replaceable battery, 2,000 milliamp hour battery, lithium ion, and uh, I think it's about 60 bucks. Something to consider. Anyhow, let's get up there and see what we can find out. Amp probe, let's see if this motor's pulling. And of course, as soon as you get up to clamp onto it, it shuts down. And 
shut off at the perfect temperature. That figures, huh? Run 260. So we're almost 100 pounds under it. I don't know. What do you do? So we could blank that thing off, see if it trips out at the same spot. We did this last time, but we can do it again, I guess. And I don't know if you can beat that. That's pretty good, 350 on the money. Now we could make this self-resetting. Just crank that uh, nut down and it automatically reset on its own, but it don't really like doing that. There's no reason for it to be doing what it's doing. Not sure. So far, nothing good. Okay, we're back down to 275. Hit the button. Fan comes on immediately. I mean, I don't know if they're getting it boxes in front of this thing or what they're doing. I mean, it's possible they're getting that or it could be getting that. If you got that screen on there, there's really no way to stop it other than maybe put something here in front of it. Take a piece of sheet metal, make an L shape, something or another to keep them from doing it. I mean, that's the only thing I can come up with. Maybe take that piece that's for the backside of the fan, put it on the front. I don't know. I need to talk to the owner, but he's not answering. The motor's pulling 1.4. Sure, what to do when it's not acting up. Right about 112. Let's see what kind of temperature we got going into it from this position right here. So we're running about 78 to 80, depending on how you hold the thermometer. And that's running right at 110, so let's say 80, so 90, 100, 110 is 30 degrees over the ambient. That's not too out of line. Got all kinds of new toys today, don't we? This has been a Pleasant surprise. Watch how fast this thing boots up. So we turn it on, hit the button. You know I use the FLIR uh, C2. I think it's C2. It's the more expensive one. It sells for 800 bucks. Takes forever to boot up. Watch how fast this thing boots up. There, boom, ready to go. It's got much better resolution. And holy cow, this thing is just stupid fast. But, I mean, like, yeah, look at that. You can see a truck flying by. I mean, you normally can't see crazy crap like that. that that's that far away. You literally, and this is not even using the imposed lines. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And it also can do live video right to my phone, which is another thing. It's just nuts. Let's see if we can figure out that motor's getting hotter than normal. Major heat coming out of that stupid thing, 142 degrees, 147. I think blows away the flare. Unbelievable. Look at the definition and where the motor shows where the heat's at. Never could get that out of the flare. Definition of that compressor. And it's running. You can see the red marker there, it's falling around. 126. Yeah, we can do a live thing here in a little bit with the camera, but my goodness, I've never seen anything as quick resolution as this thing. Went ahead and dropped it to three. Defrost, basically one every eight hours. Go ahead and get this back off. Uh, not sure what to do. Uh, the owner's not t uh, available to ask what's going on, when it happened, how often it happens, all that stuff that I kind of need to make an educated guess. Is the motor somehow shut now? I mean, that's a possibility. Is boxes getting over in front of it? That's a possibility. I mean, I can guess all day on it. But I don't know what you're supposed to do. Guess we'll put this back over here and hope nobody moves it over. Supposedly, it's not not used very often. And you got all that heat up here. I put that up here. Maybe that'll help out a little bit. I may move it over so the heat just flops right up to the ceiling tile there. Be nice to move that over. Oh, somebody's got it too short. Oh, can't move it already running too hot 150 some degrees out of a commercial application it's pretty warm uh, you don't usually have us work on his heat so I'm gonna go change and stuff if they put the case cover here back on top of it they won't be able to see that but 
they don't care. They want to make sure this thing's running, so keep face clear. I've had to do this at Dairy Queen and a couple other places, so we're gonna put that there. That way, hopefully it'll help. Hey, if it trips and somebody's like, oh, wait a minute here, uh, maybe I shouldn't do that, then maybe I'll fix it. Maybe it'll be a callback, but I don't know what else to do without talking to the guy. His voicemail keeps, phone keeps going into voicemail. We also have an ice machine that needs looked at, so we can go look at that while we're waiting around. Right here's the reason why I don't use that big backpack, because you wouldn't be able to put the big backpack up here. Unfortunately, it was a total waste of money. What do we got here? We got a big green key. Looks like it's probably turned off, I don't know. It's surprisingly clean. It's got a UV light system in there, which is good. Got some crappy water. What do we got going on here? Let's click that button. Long harvest. Water's going, which means we've got uh, water in there. That's good. Three and four are both running 79 to 81. So every one of those is doggone close to about the same. All right, they just kind of click. Water's full. Let's take a look at our, yep, there it goes. Heard it cook on the compressor. Let's take a look in here. Minimum's 18 degrees, so we're obviously getting cold at the bottom. You can see it's starting to get colder and move up. The center one there is 62. There's some reflections going on here that you gotta keep an account for. Yeah, she's getting, she's getting kind of cold. Definitely is a little dirty. Uh, it needs cleaned. It's not a surprise being at one of these uh, sub places. Freezing up there. It mainly looks like it probably needs cleaned. Air filter's clean. Looks like dropping in temperature. Liquid's at 93. Discharge 127. Evaporator's 2837. So it just started running. Don't seem too horribly off. UV lights to work in. Lady says probably about a year old. Wasn't real sure. Checking to see if we got any issues with the hot gas. Harvest valve kicking in. Everything feels pretty cold here. Yeah, right there's the harvest valve. Nothing's leaking by on that. We're good there. It just takes hot gas straight from the compressor and dumps it, like I said, in the evaporator. Let's take a look and see if it's freezing any better. We are freezing all the way down here on the bottom, freezing up here, freezing here, and even freezing here. So it's freezing. Let's go ahead and clean this thing up. I don't see an issue with it. Let's go ahead and back out of here. Put this into a harvest real quick. Gotta put the cover on. That way the magnetic switch is meeting. Manual harvest. Turn on manual harvest, yes. We're checking out the inputs here. We are sensing low water and high water. Those are working. The microphone, which is the ice thickness, is working. High pressure cutout says it's open, which could be from it shutting off. I don't know. It's going to equalize when it first comes on and it'll drop, probably close. Uh, current switch closed. Open it up. And it opens. Close it. It goes closed. All relays on. It turns on the water, the pump, water solenoid pump, fan would have came on if it was high enough. Seems to me like everything's working there with that. I'm gonna pass or fail one or the other, which usually, there you go, pass. Not really seeing much of anything else. Clean the machine, long harvest, that can happen from a dirty evaporator. Uh, to not thick enough of ice, because it never actually had enough to open a cover there to trigger it. Just took out these two screws, loosened them up. You see we got some funky jibber juice there. Oh yeah, not too horribly bad, huh? Got real high quality water there with a lot of iron in it. See, we just scrub the outside and don't get it apart and clean the inside. That, ugh, I love getting knocked in the face with that. Leave some joy jelly there on the uh, control, on the uh, panel. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that's calcium, see? Calcium will throw off the water as it travels down. You see that a lot of this is silicone. Ice is shot anyway. You can tell any cleaning that they've done has not really involved a lot of scrubbing. There's the way that door goes all the way back. Every time makes me think that it's not level. Looks like they came out with a new plug on that. Went ahead and threw some water in there. 
like I said, I usually use about half a container. I want it potent because I don't want to be here all day. I use about half of it for the machine. So I'll save about half of it. You can see it bubbling and getting that calcium off of it. You're not going to get all this crap off. So we're not going to spend all day on that. All right, so we got it cleaned up about as good as you're going to get it. Um, everything's looking pretty good. There's scratches and stuff that are in here that you're not getting out. Got a good majority of all the calcium buildup off of that. Took this completely apart. Soaked it really good. Got those end pieces completely cleaned up. That's what, how you know whether or not you get the right amount of water. So if it's not filling up enough, that could be a problem. All this is a lot better than what it was. It was pretty bad. Same thing with this piece here. So everything's a lot better than it was. Now we've had a chance to let everything kind of dry out. You can see calcium build up really bad on all that there. That's what's holding that plate. So it's holding the ice on the plate so it's not going to drop. That's the majority of it. I gotta scrub that there. Scrub some of this nasty crap off the bottom and we should be good to go. All right, so we've already scrubbed all this here. Then all through the top, all through here, got all this underneath here. Got it all cleaned up. You've seen how nasty that was earlier. Got it all cleaned up. A little bit of stain here and there on it, but you can only get it so good. You can't wait around when you got crap water and then hope that everything's gonna be great. All right, so we got the rest of the cleaner in there. Go ahead, chemicals are added. I'll go ahead and start. Now it's got 30 minutes before this thing's gonna be finished, which is a long time to get stuck into it. The reality is 10 minutes is all it's gonna take for it to actually clean, and then it's gonna start dumping. That's where I like to force it out, but this is a little bit more difficult to force it out once uh, it goes into it. There is a trick to it. I usually have to play with it as much as possible to like finally get it figured out. Some of them work, sometimes I don't. There's my owner, let's talk to him. All right, so the owner did say that it's been tripping a few times here. And prior to that, he put the cover on the unit, but that was like four days sooner. And just now, suddenly it was starting to act up. So he's gonna leave the cover off, we're gonna put on auto reset, and he's gonna keep an eye on it. And, and it sounds like he's been doing a pretty good job on keeping the um, machines clean. He's been doing these cleanings, so he hasn't been tearing it apart like I've been doing, but he's at least running it through it, which is better than most owners. So uh, we're gonna put that on auto reset, and we're gonna finish, see if we can speed this up a little bit. All right, to switch it to auto reset, you just take that screw, loosen up that lock nut right there, and then you screw it down, and then you tighten up the lock nut. And that holds that down a little bit. Now it'll still trip out, and it'll have a differential until it goes so far down, and then it'll eventually come back on again, and then it'll cycle back and forth. But you know, it should have an off cycle long enough that it shouldn't cause it to rapid cycle and cause a problem with the uh, compressor short cycling. As far as the sight glass, we're still clear on that. Yep, we're good on that. It's been holding fine this whole time. Uh, I told him about what I did here on this. I told him how the heating system was running pretty, pretty warm. Um, you can definitely feel it kind of going up. That'll hopefully keep. Yeah, it's fairly cool here. You know, it could have been hitting this and bouncing it in there too. I think I'm just gonna move this stupid thing over here. I'm gonna move that over there. I'll keep this hopefully clear, unless one of these boxes falls over and somebody decides to stick things in here, but who knows, anything's possible. You can't fix uh, craziness. Let's go back out there and see if the ice machine's ready. All right, so we finally got done. This thing should be clean, but check this crap out. All that nasty crap in there yet. So you're like, what the hell? Let's go over here to the drain line. Sure as crap, that thing's all plugged up. So we're gonna blow her out. <coughs> Got this nasty hose out of there, and look at this crap. This is freaking filth. That is disgusting. Let's try blowing it out there because the other side didn't work. All right, so we got that cleaned out with a wire brush, or whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to get this thing in there, and it does not want to go in there for crap. I go out and grab my nitrogen with the regulator on it, blast that turd clean into oblivion. I got it draining down in the same freaking spot as the uh, pot machine, same same hole. Bacteria's coming back through, I'm sure, and growing up the drain line like it usually does, which is why you have to have an air gap between the drain line and most uh, drains. I can't even get this freaking screwdriver through there. 
wonder if these idiots that installed it put freaking glue in there and glued the thing shut. Something bad's happened, I don't know what, but we're gonna find out here soon enough. All right, this is gonna come in handy because this is gonna allow me to get the drill with the right angle tool on it into there. There's calcium buildup in there. Either way, whether we chopped it out or whatever, it's, it needs, it needs to come apart because there's one good piece there that we have to reuse, it's factory. So I don't really, we're gonna basically do it like that right there. I don't have my GoPro in here and it's such a pain in the butt to carry it. So today's off the camera phone. So not gonna get to see it, but I mean, if you got a slight imagination. That worked beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It got all the way up in that, that's mainly in that tight spot. Boy, oh boy, what a mess. All right, got everything hooked back together. Let's go ahead and tell it to make ice, which the first thing it does during making ice is it dumps the water. And look at that, there goes the water. I didn't want to dump what was in the pan uh, into over top of the ice, because there's still a little bit of ice in there, but you can see it's draining out. Good, everything's flowing. So in reality, yeah, we had a lot of issues there with it being dirty, but we primarily needed to get the old water out. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hellacious accumulation of crap. So now that that's kinda got it about all out of there, we'll hit stop and then we'll pull that pan out and we'll rinse it out real quick. All right, so it's finally working like it should. We got some good ice there, so we should be good to go.